Welcome to the second video where we talk about calculations with titrations. Um, we discussed the principle and we looked at some titration curves. Now we need to talk about the math behind it. And the good thing is it's fundamental math with stoichiometry we already have a full understanding of. What we're going to use is use the little skills we've developed in stoic and, and uh, hopefully make an easy process for you to see um, that titration calculations are um, within your grasp. So first and foremost we need to talk about the basic math, the terminology and how we get there. You got to have a balanced chemical equation. In other words, you got to know the mole ratio of acid to base. That's critical. You got to know how many hydrogen ions relative to hydroxide ions in the balanced reaction. Um, uh, using stoichiometry, we're going to start with the volume of the titrant in liters. You can convert to milliliters if you want. Um, and then we're going to get to convert to moles of the titrant and then to moles of the analyte. And then from there, we can use the volume of the analyte to get a molarity of our unknown analyte. Okay, I know that's a lot of fancy words, so let's actually look at it. 25 milliliters of one molar potassium hydroxide are needed to, uh, um, to neutralize, pardon me, 46.4 mils of unknown molarity HCl to reach equivalence at, uh, in the titration. What's the molarity of the acid? So we start off with this stuff. We're dropping this into an unknown molarity acid, and that's how much it took for it to come to an equivalence, probably with an indicator in it. And so what we're going to do is write our balanced equation. We have potassium hydroxide. We have hydrochloric acid. We know we will yield water and potassium chloride, KCl. And those are already balanced for us. I'm not going to worry about phases. What I care most about right now is for every one mole of base, I have one mole of acid. I'll produce one mole of water, one mole of potassium chloride. But these are what you care about. You have one mole of hydroxide per one mole of hydrogen ion. Now... We're going to start with the volume of the titrant. The titrant is the thing you know the molarity of. So this is my titrant. And my analyte is hydrochloric acid. Okay. So when you start your process, you're going to start with the volume of your analyte, 25 milliliters. And I happen to know that's 0 0.025 liters of... Uh, KOH, and then I will use my molarity to get that in terms of moles for every one mole, KOH, oh pardon me, that's backwards, and I just erased the whole thing, so I just need to do a little erasing, not all the erasing, um, for every one mole of KOH, potassium hydroxide, uh, I know that I have one liter present. So I know that liters cancel, and now I have moles of potassium hydroxide. And I know from my reaction that for one mole of potassium hydroxide, I would have one mole of hydrochloric acid. Now I'm in terms of moles of hydrochloric acid. I'm looking for molarity of the acid, so I'll simply divide by the volume I used, 46.4 in terms of liters, because molarity is in liters, 0, 0.0. 464 liters and our solution is here so we'll push this into the calculator thusly we're going to say we have 0 0.0 pardon me 0 0.025 uh, times 1 times 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.0464 now you might say why didn't you just divide this by this at the beginning if you can't see this process take place stoichiometrically, these questions do get a lot harder. You need to be able to discern your titrant from your analyte, and you need to be able to do these when these mole ratios are not one, and when other funky factors get thrown in. And so the value we get 0.538793. We should have one, two, three, three sig figs in our response, and there that's two sig figs. Let's fix that. So 0.539 would be a better answer in sig figs. So let's just go ahead and cross out 0 0.539 molar hydrochloric acid was in our container. So we just determined stoichiometrically uh, the equivalence, the, the volume, sorry, the, the molarity of hydrochloric acid it took to reach this, reach this equivalence. Okay? Um, very challenging thing to do. In the lab, titrating is a challenge in itself. Once you get the values in the titration, then you can find that unknown. When the molarity of nitric acid 
uh, if 15, what, what is the molarity of nitric acid if 15 mils of the solution is completely neutralized by 38.5 mils of 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide? Again, you can tell it's a titration because you've neutralized the solution. Titration is a neutralization when it's dealing with acids and bases. So <clears throat> we have 38.5 mils of sodium hydroxide. That's our titrant. And nitric acid is our analyte. Now, your base doesn't always function as a titrant, and your acid doesn't always function as your analyte. They can be, roles can be reversed. So don't think of one, one is, it's, is exclusive from the other. It's not. The volume of the titrant is where I begin. That's milliliters. I don't want liters, so I'm going to say 0 0.0385 liters. Ignore that. Um, and I know that for every, wait a minute, something's missing here. What could be missing? Oh, my balanced reaction. Nitric acid. Sodium hydroxide. Makes water. Sodium nitrate. Again, with coefficients of 1, so my mole ratio should be 1. Uh, molarity was 0 0.150 0 moles for every 1 liter of my titrant. In my mole ratio, 1 mole of sodium hydroxide makes 1 mole of nitric acid. The volume of titrant you use is 15 mils, which is 0 0.015 liters. And so we should note liters cancels, moles sodium hydroxide cancel, moles nitric sorry, moles of nitric acid remain. Got a little hasty there. And that's a volume in liters. And I'll simply multiply across, divide by denominators 0 0.0385. Times 0.15 divided by 0 0.015. And we end up finding that our concentration is 0 0.385 molar HNO3 nitric acid. What's the pH of the titrant? The titrant's pH, we would have to do what to find this? So if we have a molarity of sodium hydroxide, 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide, we would do the negative log of 0.15. Look at that. I typed into the power field. Um, 0.15 is the molarity. Our pOH would be 0.8239. We have three digits in my concentration, so I get three digits after. So my pOH is 0 0.8239, so that's a 4. pOH. Subtract from 14, 14 minus... And we'll just click that. I don't know if it'll let me. And then there's my pH. 13.18. Sorry. 13.176. I get three digits after. So, that's my pH. What type of salt is formed? Sodium nitrate. The parent at base is a strong base, sodium hydroxide. The parent acid is a strong acid, nitric, so it's going to be a neutral salt. What's the estimated pH of the salt solution formed? Seven. And that's because this is a neutral salt. A 25 milliliter solution of sulfurous acid, H2SO3, of unknown molarity is completely neutralized by 18 mils of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide. So again, with the basic titrant, for this I apologize, we should have done one where there was an acidic titrant. Uh, sulfurous acid is going to be my analyte. And I'm going to titrate now. So I begin with the volume of my titrant, but i got to do my reaction first. Sulfurous acid. A weak acid this time. Sulfuric is strong. Sulfurous is not strong. My salt is going to be sodium... Na2SO3 sodium sulfate. And of course, I'm going to make water. 
I'm going to need two moles of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to need two moles of water, and the rest should work out just fine. So in this reaction, I have one mole of acid for every two moles of base. That's a big, big important factor. So I have 18 milliliters, 0.018 liters of my titrant sodium hydroxide. That's where I always begin. And then my molarity of my, ti my titrant, which is sodium hydroxide, 1.0 moles for every one liter of sodium hydroxide. Then I can do my mole ratio. One mole sodium hydroxide requires two moles of sulfurous acid from my balanced reaction. And then I can divide by the volume I used, 0 0.025 liters of sulfurous acid. So my, vo my volume of my titrant cancels, my moles of my titrant cancels, leaves me with moles per liter of my analyte, and I'll punch into the calculator, 0 0.018 volume times 2, the mole ratio, divided by 0 0.025. And the molarity of my sulfurous acid is 1.44 molar. What is the pH of the titrant? Again with that, 1 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, that's going to be negative log. I'll skip into that field of 1 molar pH is zero. Wow. What type of salt is formed? Sodium. Wait, that's not right. pH of the titrant is going to be 14, not zero. It's a base. So when you do the negative log of one, you get zero. Zero is your pOH. pH is equal to 14. There's virtually zero hydrogen ions in this stuff. What's the type of salt formed? Well, you have sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfite. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Sulfurous acid is a weak acid. What's going to happen in that solution is that free sulfate ion, sul sulfide ions are going to take hydrogen ions to build this sulfurous acid, leaving behind hydroxide, making us a basic salt with a pH between 7 and 9. That is the end of the practice calculations for titrations. I hope you've taken some solid notes and come to class ready to do some great practice and ask questions to get you further along in your learning. Please see us in class with anything you need and come to tutorials with extra help for extra help. We'll see you on the next one.